I'm Jules Astara. Welcome to my home here in the Blue Ridge Mountains. This is my basement studio, sanctuary, and playroom. So this is where I like to have fun and make a marvelous mess, <laughs> experiment, explore, and co-create with the inspiration all around us and the beauty within us as well. So thank you for joining me and taking this time for yourself. So I am working on this wood panel today in the circular shape because I had it. And because the O, the circle reminded me of O for October, which happens to be when I'm doing it. And it was a good excuse to finally use it. If you don't have a wood panel, because I know that's not something everyone might have just sitting around, I wanted to suggest that you could substitute some repurposed cardboard. So this cardboard at the back of this watercolor pad is nice and sturdy. So if you happen to have something like that, that you can repurpose from some kind of packaging, you could still turn it into a circular shape if you wanted to. You could use a plate or a cup to trace a circle and cut it out in a circular shape, obviously made from trees as well. So it might give us a little bit of something kind of similar absorbency and surface to work with. So I just want to play with the different levels of absorbency, experiment with that, that I might get. And so we might continue with this. I really quite love it as it is. Um, it's very simple, yet it has a kind of natural beauty and simplicity because I love being able to see through to some of the wood grain. I often add several layers to my work. So sometimes stopping before it might feel as full and abundant, but there is a wide open space that adds a different kind of abundance to a piece like that. I enjoyed it as it is. We'll see how far it goes. I would love to see what you create if you'd like to share. I do host a group for co-creative artists that you can, because I see this as a sort of collaboration since we're exploring and experimenting together here. So you can get links to that along with the supply list it's in the description for the video below. Let's go. So I have this Liquitex Basics Acrylic Gloss Fluid Medium, which is new to me. I'm not sure if I've used the gloss before, but this is a new bottle. So in the unboxing theme, just opening it to get started on this with the wood panel and a new alcohol inks. You can see a few imperfections on the wood panel there, but that's okay. I'm choosing the side that I like best, which is this one for the wood grain that I want to work with. And now unboxing or unpackaging <laughs> a fun new set of alcohol ink colors that I also really enjoy. You can use any that you might already have if you have any alcohol inks or make your own. I'm loving the ones in this package which include lettuce and eggplant and cranberry. <laughs> and now the round wood panel is making me think of a dinner plate since those are all named after food. So just starting by using what was on that seal to clean it off right onto the wood panel and then spread it around a little bit in just a few places because I wanted to play with the different absorbencies. So putting this in a few areas over some of the wood grain maybe that I like where I might not want it to soak in or just spreading it out in various areas of the wood panel so that it's covering some areas across the whole thing to keep it harmonious, not only in one little spot. And I'm using a brush that I usually use with acrylic paint for that. Since it's an acrylic medium, I do tend to keep my brushes for watercolor separate. And then deciding what color to start with, I just go with my intuition or gut, what feels good. I thought it was going to be the lettuce and changed my mind and decided to start with the darker one. I think this is the eggplant and you get different types of marks you can see but whether I'm touching it with the tip or not touching it with the tip and whether I'm doing drips or straight lines and then coming in with the lettuce next over top of that darker color. And I love it. I love this shade of green on the wood. These particular colors go really nicely with the color of the raw wood underneath, in my opinion. And I'm taking this one a bit slower. If you've watched the other two in this Inktoberfest series already, you might notice that I was working 
more slowly with this one, even though I've still sped it up just a little bit, not as much on this one. It has a different sense of pace even along with the energy and the simplicity. And I think working on the wood panel contributes to that for me because it's like there's already this piece of art that I'm just adding to. <laughs> so bringing in some of that white gouache, which is an acrylic gouache from Liquitex that I opened in one of the first videos that I'm going to bring in just to add some white. I hadn't necessarily planned for this to be a more simple one or have so few supplies and layers. I was trusting the process and the feeling of the moment, going with the flow, and I have noticed that the pace that we work definitely can influence the finished piece and how we listen and how much we add to something. The materials we work with can very much influence it. So in the Painted Ladies course that I host, one of the things that we talk about is changing it up because it's about the art of transformation and change and how changing your pace and changing your materials has can ch change the art, change the process, change the experience that we're having and therefore the results. So adding water to help activate that gouache and just slowly choosing what areas I want to cover both in terms of the wood panel as well as the ink and the color that we have on here. And by using the water to dilute it, I get that lovely veiled effect, like you're in the clouds or the mist. And this is something that I particularly like to do with the alcohol ink because it dries so quickly and absorbs in certain areas into the wood where I didn't use the fluid medium, the acrylic medium, then the veil <laughs> works differently over it because it's not blending. You notice that those colors aren't tinting the white paint too much. And I also like that I'm working with certain areas have that gloss medium over top of them of the wood and other areas don't. So that the wood was not glossy at all when I started. It had not been prepared or varnished or finished in any way. It was raw panel. So I get a little bit of contrast, a little subtle nuance of difference because of that that I wouldn't have gotten otherwise, which creates a little bit of a different sort of depth because some areas are absorbing more than others. Even if I come back over it all, which I did on this one with the gloss medium everywhere, but because at this stage it's not all covered, you get different amounts that absorbency and the depth is creates a different effect in these layers before coming over with the final varnish. And though I didn't do so on this particular piece, I have on other pieces, especially wood, played with different types of mediums. So sometimes maybe using a matte and sometimes a satin or a gloss in different areas of the piece and you can get some interesting effects that way too. So now coming in with the spray bottle to soften some of the edges of paint where I want to keep it having that kind of cloudy feel and no real sharp edges and lines. And it might surprise people sometimes how much care and attention can go into a seemingly simple piece. And I think that the energy involved in that, I sometimes feel it radiates from it. So even though what you're looking at visually may seem it doesn't have to be super complex. That's part of the beauty of it is that it doesn't have to be hard and it doesn't have to be super complex, yet it can still be rich and deep and even meaningful or therapeutic for me, the way that it makes me feel. So I'm loving this one and I'm deciding to leave it as it is. Just it has finished drying, fully dried. I allowed it to fully dry, then cleaning it off to make sure that I didn't have dust or anything that had collected on it before putting this final coat of the gloss medium varnish on it. I might add more than one, but I just wanted to show you at least that I would do one. So coming over the entire thing with that, I would you don't normally use a little bit bigger brush than this probably, but this is what was handy. <laughs> 
using a bigger brush can help get a more even coat sometimes and also using a synthetic brush can help to have less hairs fall out because you don't want those stuck in your varnish ideally although if you know me very well <laughs> if you've taken any other of classes with me you know I tend to take a pretty wabi-sabi approach embrace any what might be flaws and turn them into sometimes part of the piece part of what makes it special and take that kind of beauty and imperfections approach it's a matter of discernment awareness and intention and choosing with that so depending different moods might lead different directions. And if that interests you, approaching creativity with different types of curiosity and intention, you might enjoy the Art as an Altar course that I host as well. You can see more information about that from the link in description. I haven't decided what I'm going to name this one yet, but I do have a few ideas in mind that I'll share in the description, and I'd love to hear if you would name it, what you would title it in the comments. Thanks again for joining me. Please give it a thumbs up if you appreciate it and subscribe for future videos.